In this video, you are going to get an in-depth look and review of ProPresenter. It is a presentation software that is one of our highly recommended applications for worship ministry, specifically for displaying lyrics, media, sermon slides, other graphics for your in-person displays like we have here in the room or for your live stream as well for your tools like your video switcher. So we're going to talk through our setup in depth so you understand all the software and the hardware, how everything works. And then also we're going to talk about just our opinions about ProPresenter using it in 2022 and how to determine whether or not this is the right application for your worship ministry. Behind the camera, you have me, Jake Goslin, and then here we have Adam Baronic, our tech guru at Worship Ministry School and South Fellowship Church to walk us through the system. I want to invite you to check out our ProPresenter online course where we walk through step by step, click by click, how to assemble the exact system that you see here today at South Fellowship Church. Uh, we are running a limited time discount on this course. It's going on sale as a standalone co course for the first time ever. So check out the link below. Make sure you enroll before the countdown expires to snag that huge discount. Adam, go ahead and explain why would a church want to use ProPresenter for their presentation software? Yeah, so ProPresenter allows you to show and help the congregation engage with tons of content. Lyrics for singing along to, scripture readings for congregational readings, uh, the teaching pastor if they want to show photos or sermon points or um, oftentimes we'll have a sermon bumper so or other videos that people will want to see and we can engage with. And not only does it show the content in the room, but you can set it to show content online for your live stream as well as show the uh, the band on stage or the teaching pastor content on another screen so that they can see something different than the rest of the congregation. Um, and then beyond that, you can even use it as an automation tool for triggering other things like lights as well. One thing I love about ProPresenter is it is very scalable to your church's size. So you don't have to be a humongous church to use ProPresenter. You could be a small church of a couple dozen people, or you could be a mega church. I've seen it used in so many different applications. It really doesn't matter what size your church is. So tell us more about all of the content destinations that we have in this setup. Where, where is all of the content going? Yeah, so we have screens in the room. We have two screens on the sides of the stage for displaying lyrics or videos or sermon points, whatever we want the congregation to see. But then we also have a stage display and this shows the band different lyrics where we are in the song. It shows a timer or a clock, tons of information. You can really put anything charts. on there. Chord charts you can have on there. I often put the number system so I can play along with whatever key we're doing the song in. And that allows me to not have a tablet or music on stage. Uh, another destination we're sending this to is our lobby. We have, I don't know, five TVs out in the lobby in different locations so that if someone's coming into the room, they can tell where we're at in a service. If someone is just out in the lobby, they can watch the service as well. And then we have our live stream. So we're sending lower thirds as well as full screen content, depending on where we're at in the service. So you can see on our multi view here from our ATEM software that the program feed is currently a camera with the lyrics as a bottom lower third. So here you have the lower third lyrics coming into this input on the switcher. And then we have another input that's basically our full screen content. If we want to play back sermon bumper videos, announcement slides, anything that needs to be full screen, that can be sent to our program feed, which is our final output to our live stream. That's what people see online. In this context, we're using a larger switcher with many cameras, but um, something we often recommend if you're using four cameras or less is just having an ATEM Mini Pro, and then you can directly stream from ProPresenter. So you can do all of your layering within the software and then send it directly to uh, Resi, BoxCast, or just an RTMP feed to go to your live stream. Yeah, so very versatile software. It can really do more even than just presentation, even though that's kind of what we're focusing in on, on here in this walkthrough today. It can live stream directly from it. And then check out this uh, cool multi-view feature. So one of the things I love about ProPresenter is just all the ways you can customize not only your actual outputs to, to where the video feed is being sent, but also when you're using the software, you can customize how you're viewing 
all of those different screens simultaneously. So Adam, kind of go through like the different um, screen options you have right there. You got the multi-viewer, or if you wanted to view individual screens, um, you can do that as well. You can make that zoom. So we're able to see the in-person display output, the live stream output, which is just the lower thirds, our announcements layer, which is nothing during songs, and then our confidence monitor. And we're able to see all of those at once because we're using this operator output or multi-viewer view. But if we wanted to during the songs, we could have it so that whenever a song is happening, we only see the stage display so we know what they are seeing from the stage. Or if we wanted to always see the in-person congregation, the lower thirds, or announcements, we can view any of these at any time. And it doesn't affect you know, what everyone else is seeing, it's just for the operator to be able to view different things at once. Yeah, and then one of the great things about ProPresenter are the different ways you can control what content is being sent on different layers, and or, you know you can easily clear things off. So he just cleared off the the slide content queue. There's a background media queue right there. There's announcements layers, props layers, messages layers, audio layers. Really, when you're thinking about ProPresenter and the content, really you kind of just visualize it as different layers of things you can stack on top of one another. You can pull individual things in or out, whether it's it's lyrics or audio or backgrounds. It just gives you a lot of control to change things on the fly when needed. So what we're gonna do is Adam's gonna walk through, I'll pull the screen up on the video here for you. He's gonna kind of walk us through a typical way that we've laid out our services. And then you'll kind of see how the, the outputs uh, change for the different destinations, as well as some cool automation features we have. Yeah, so during rehearsal, the person will be running through the songs, but when it's time for the service to start, one of the things that happens is we have a timer that automatically starts 10 minutes before each service. So uh, within ProPresenter, we have this calendar feature where we can automate certain things to happen at certain times. So uh, at 8.50 and at uh, 10.25, we have 10 minute countdown timers, or rather they count down to the time of when the service starts and it displays it on the screens. And then we click announcements slides and what that does is it goes through scrolling slides as well as starts the music for our background music. So we have um, just pre-service music that plays and that's done through ProPresenter. The slides are scrolling through. And then when the countdown timer hits zero, generally we start with a song. So we'll click the song and sometimes we'll automate the lights from here. Sometimes we'll automate the lights from uh, Ableton on stage, but then this person is just scrolling through songs. And because we have this macro here, we're able to, um, when we click the first slide, change how it looks on this, the stage display as well as the main displays. And they're just clicking through as we're singing the songs. And then we go to our sermon and we click a sermon bumper video. And what happens when I click this sermon bumper video is that it triggers light key. So it changes the lights in the room. And then after the sermon bumper plays through, it automatically goes to the next slide and triggers the title slide of the sermon, which triggers the lights to turn on. So. So let's pause, yeah, and talking about like ProPresenter here, it's, it's, it's also not just a presentation software in the sense that it's more like a, almost a production hub because what we're doing is we're sending the cues to our lighting software on a different computer over here. Here's light key, right? So Adam, go ahead and click another lighting cue. You're gonna see, see how the changes just happened here on the software. One more time, Adam. So it happens in light key, it happens in the room. We're using MIDI cues that happen over a MIDI network between the two computers. And then this can really make some seamless transition in worship because you don't have one person trying to click the right slide and click all the right lighting cues at the same time. Uh, sometimes it you know, takes one click or it can be completely automated. We have it set up so that after this bumper video slide here, it automatically advances when the video is done to this next slide for the sermon. The lights come up and the pastor can go ahead and start preaching. So super powerful automation uh, in that you can actually send cues out of ProPresenter 
um, to, to cue things like lighting or any other MIDI enabled uh, devices. You could probably even cue your video switcher if you really wanted to. Um, not only can ProPresenter send MIDI cues out though, you can also send MIDI cues in for what type of purposes, Adam? Uh, I really like to automate the lyrics when I have the opportunity. So we use Ableton often for running our tracks and that allows you to trigger um, yeah, all of the slides so that they're perfectly on time as you're singing along, uh, making sure all the lyrics are up on the screen when they need to be. Uh, that's one of my favorite features about automating with ProPresenter as a worship leader. Speaking of automating, um, one of the things that you can do is automate multiple actions at once through this macros deal here. And what you can do is create one macro and then add as many actions as you want to them. So one of the things that we use a macro for is the sermon bumper. So here on our sermon bumper, we have the look as well as the lighting. And what I can do is add these different actions of clearing certain things, making it so that the audience sees one thing, that the uh, stage display shows another thing. Uh, we can even set props, uh, trigger audio, MIDI cues, uh, as well as video and audio inputs. So what we're doing specifically with ours is clearing everything setting the proper look so that the congregation and the stage display shows the right thing. And then we have communication, which is MIDI, and we're triggering the lighting software. Not only can you receive and send automations, another way that ProPresenter is really connected is the ability to pull in songs. So you can do this three different ways. If you want to pull a song in from CCLI or Song Select, you can just search a song and pull that into your library and it's ready to go. You can edit it to you know, fit the look of your church a little bit. Another thing that um, ProPresenter is integrated with is multi-tracks, a similar thing. You can pull in songs and say you pull in Christ Be Magnified and you have the multi-tracks for that song. If you have the right subscriptions, you can just press play on your multi-track and it will automatically trigger the right slides at the right time within ProPresenter. And, and chord charts now. Yeah. And you can put, you can have chord charts, like automatically set the stage display to the right stage display with the chords over the words. Um, super easy if you're trying to save time. Pro presenter and multi-tracks, making worship leaders lazier every day, right? Or yeah, more time for <laughs> coffees with volunteers. Exactly, you know, it's, yep. it is freeing up a lot of time that could be spent doing doing other important things. But the integrations are so strong. I love the planning center yeah, integration, planning center integration. Im implementing a playlist. So like when I'm going through and I'm building a playlist for the week, um, I'm not like, individually, you know, adding my list of songs here in the playlist. I just go to the planning center or add a planning center playlist feature or, uh, and then it just automatically imports all the song data, any other items and headers so that the, the, the playlist here pretty much mirrors what's going on in our planning center service plan. Another thing worth mentioning is ProPresenter makes it pretty easy to manage all your media like backgrounds, other videos and things like that. So you can see how we have all of ours organized. We categorize different motion backgrounds, um, still backgrounds, um, church motion graphics, or um, what's the other place we get? Visual Media, Visual church. media church. Those are great places to get backgrounds from. Um, just so many great resources out there, countdown videos, and then ProPresenter can handle it all. Not only can you just play media from other sources, you can create content within this software. The editing tools are incredible. It's basically like having Photoshop built into the software as well. Yeah, and one of the things that I did was a presentation for our Churchfront Live event. This is really minimalist, but all of it was done within ProPresenter. If I wanted to add more graphics, if I wanted these to show up in bullet points and happen um, in order, all of that can be done. You can have things appear and reappear in funny ways. Um, like I said, this is super minimalist, but you can have tons of graphics and shapes and different layers and images, and you can do all of that within this editing software. So you can add text, you can add different shapes, uh, different media, sources. So if I wanted to have a cool background behind this quote, I can even um, send it to the back here so it's behind it, be able to change the opacity and the color. Um, you can do all of these things just directly within the software. Yeah, so if you're, if you're a pastor, you know, prepping your sermon slides every Sunday, you really should just be using 
ProPresenter because it's gonna it's gonna make the process so much quicker instead of you know using PowerPoint or Canva exporting as JPEGs and sending them to your worship leader or then importing them and we, we know how that can be we've done that a lot and it's kind of a pain but ProPresenter it can just really everything can be done natively in here it's kind of like Canva or Photoshop or PowerPoint arguably more powerful with all the build-ins and cool features uh, that you can implement. Also, there's a very strong Bible feature as well. So like when you're trying to add Bible verses in on the fly, you want them formatted properly. There's all sorts of fancy things you can do um, with the Bible feature. I know we just covered a ton in this video about the software aspect of ProPresenter. I also wanna talk about the hardware we're using to send our video signal to the destinations. But before I cover hardware, I wanna encourage you to check out the ProPresenter Essentials course because I'm sure a lot of what we just covered about the software and what it can do might feel pretty overwhelming, especially if you're new to the software. So click the link below, check out the course. Even if you have zero experience with ProPresenter and you're not a, a techie person, like you're not super comfortable with, you know, just diving in and learning these things kind of the slow and hard way, which who is, uh, we can greatly accelerate your process of implementing ProPresenter at your church. So check out the ProPresenter Essentials course down below in this video. Now let's talk about the hardware we're using to send our video signals to our projectors and TVs and, and how we're making this work because this computer is outputting like, I don't know, like five or, five or so different video signals to different destinations. Adam, tell them about our favorite piece of gear that's under this desk down here. It's a little dark down here, but yeah. we can see it. We have a expansion chassis, and this one particular has a few different slots, but the main thing in here is a deck link duo. So it's got four SDI ports that we can use as import, inputs or outputs, in this case outputs, and we can go directly from this to a video switcher or a video hub, and then be able to send it to different places combine it with different things, but just the ability to send all of those directly over SDI and put all of the graphics processing on this unit rather than computer is really important to us. Okay, so like Adam said, all these video outputs go here to our video hub that's in our rack. Um, so we get the Blackmagic um, Video Hub Clean Switch, a 12 by 12. Gets us lots of routing options to send video to all of our projectors. TV screens over SDI. One fun trick that we implemented in this setup uh, so that we could actually share this computer desktop uh, to any you know video destination, the screens or the lobby TVs, is we're actually running uh, an HDMI output from the Mac Mini um, into the ATEM Mini over here. And then we're actually running our main ProPresenter content as well into this ATEM Mini before it goes back to the Video Hub. So then we can actually switch between some different um, video um, sources here. So let's say, you know, for our Celebrate Recovery, they want to be able to just pull up, you know, uh, a Google presentation file, but that's in a web browser. Well, now they can pull up Google Chrome, pull up their presentation, and that's gonna show up here because I switched the angle here on the ATEM Mini. Or actually, if we wanna have kind of a poor man's eye magnification, we can also send our um, uh, video cameras up to the screens as well. I got a whole other video that goes a little bit more in depth than that, but I wanted to mention that to you because it's just kind of a, a really, you know, easy way to use a little affordable video switcher like this uh, to give you that flexibility from your ProPresenter station. So we, have, we haven't actually talked about the computer we're using to run ProPresenter yet. Yeah, uh, this is a M1 Mac Mini, um, eight gigs of RAM, so it's the base model. It's just, I think, seven or $800 with a, you know, maybe $100 screen, and it works great. Yeah, it is insane how well this computer has worked with ProPresenter and like you guys have seen here all of the various video outputs uh, being sent to, to, to different destinations. Uh, they are all 1080p so it's not like we're sending a bunch of 4k outputs um, but the M1 Mac Mini handles it very well and you know we have had our glitches with ProPresenter right so it's not all you know perfect 100% of the time. We've had some issues where, you know, ProPresenter will be working fine for a few months and then one day it'll just randomly crash or something will freeze when you're editing in it. So 
So ProPresenter, it's not perfect, and I'll make that very clear in this video, but they do have a team of developers that are very dedicated to continuously improving and updating and adding features to the software, making it more stable, and then they have a support team as well. You can just send a ticket to them, that's the easiest way to get your ProPresenter issues troubleshooted. But in terms of computer specs, uh, if you're gonna buy a computer today, definitely would recommend uh, the M1 Mac Mini. If you can get 16 gigabits of RAM, just to give you a little bit more, um, yeah, just processing power to work with there and you can run a few more applications with ProPresenter, especially if you're gonna stream with ProPresenter, I would recommend the 16 gigabyte uh, upgrade. But at this point, I would not be getting any Intel computers anymore specifically for ProPresenter. But I like the base model Mac Mini because it really saved uh, funds to be able to allocate towards the, the Decklink Duo and the expansion chassis. And, yeah. and then all the other things, we have another Thunderbolt dock on here, a CalDigit Thunderbolt dock, keyboard, mouse, this is an LG 1080p 24 inch monitor. It works really awesome for this workstation. I hope this in-depth walkthrough and review of ProPresenter was helpful for you and your church. Like I said, I do think this software is useful no matter what your church's size is. You can, you know, start with, you know, smaller scale uh, setup. And then what's cool is it's always going to grow and scale with your system at your church. If you, if you only have, you know, one screen that you're displaying things on or whether you have like, you know, 10 different screens with, you know, five unique outputs that need to be sent out and formatted differently. ProPresenter will be able to kind of go along with you through that entire journey of growth. And as I already mentioned, check out our ProPresenter Essentials online course. We're making it available as a standalone course for the first time, uh, pretty much this the week that this video is released. And we're running a significant discount on the course as well for those of you who want to sign up and join us on the journey of refreshing and revamping this course over the next couple of months. This course has helped hundreds of worship ministries around the globe implement ProPresenter in their worship ministry. We're going to show you the same setup that we use here, the same exact uh, systems and workflows and in hardware and accessories and we'll help you customize it to your church so that you'll feel empowered as a worship leader, as a, as a tech ministry leader, and then you can equip your team to use the software week in and week out as well. So click that link below, enroll in that course today. Thanks for watching this video. Hit the thumbs up if you found it helpful. Share it with your friends in worship ministry, and we'll see you next time.